Welcome to Excel 2010 Top Keyboard Shortcuts. I'm Trainer Laurie. I'm very excited about this because these are the keyboard shortcuts that everyone should know if you use Excel on a regular basis. Essentially, these are going to help you perform actions quickly without using the mouse. You never know when you might lose your mouse or uh, you just want to be faster because you don't want to have to move your hand to the mouse all the time. So how to do all these important things using your keyboard. First, how to use the keyboard. If it says Control Z, for example, then you would hit Control and then you would hit Z. Even though it shows a plus sign, you do not use that. Even though it shows this as a capital, you do not have to hit Shift. So it's just Control and then Z in that order. If you have multiple steps like Control Shift Z, you must do that in that order and keep them all depressed until the thing happens. What is Control Z? Well, this is probably the first one that you've got to learn. It is undo. And uh, here's an easy way to remember it. If you fall asleep doing what you're doing, you're not paying attention, that's taking Z's, right? Having a lot of Z's. Well, that'll help you remember Control Z is the uh -oh key. And so it undoes something. So for example, I did that, and now I'm going back. I want to undo, and I'm going back until I finally started from the scratch. If I just hit delete, I wouldn't be able to go back all those steps. I wouldn't be able to see everything that I did. And control Y, which Y is next to Z in the alphabet, and I know some of you may say Z for Z. We say Z in America, but everywhere else you might be saying Z. So uh, it's control Z or Z, and then control Y, which is right next to Z on the alphabet, and that undoes a undo. It's called redo, but it allows you to undo or go back one. So I went back four. I didn't mean to. I only wanted to go back three. I used control Y. You get 100 undos, at least until you hit control S. And control S is save. So, and it's also the same if you have your quick access toolbar. It's These are the same buttons, the undo and the redo. And you will not see redo until you've used an undo. The second one you've got to learn is control C. Control X and Control V. If you don't know these already, Control C is copy. And it's easy to remember because it starts with C and copy starts with C. Control X looks like scissors. And that's how you can remember that is cut. So whether you use Control C or Control X, you're going to highlight something and it will simply have the running lights around it until you decide how to paste it. And Control V. V for Velcro will allow you to paste it somewhere else. Now if you're copying it, it leaves the original in the first cell. If you're cutting it, it removes it from that first cell. So that's the only difference. And you probably already know these, but if you don't, you really need to learn them. Control B, Control I, Control U. These are very easy, bold, italic, and underline, and these work the same in all the programs. And you can see I used all three on this one over here. And so uh, while you're before you're typing, do Control B, and then everything you type will be bold. And then when you're done, hit Control B again. It's a toggle switch, and it turns it back off again. So it's very convenient if you're doing a lot of typing to instead of taking your hands off the keyboard. And it's the same as the same tools that you have on the on the home tab. Control A. Now we're getting into something that's exclusively Excel. This is very important. Control A. If you select or click somewhere outside, if you your cursor happens to be outside where your data is, and you hit Control A, it will select everything. It'll select all the cells. It's the same as hitting the Select All button that's up here in the top left corner. However, if you s click inside where your data is and then hit Control A, it will simply highlight your data. So there's nothing else you have to do. So how does it know when your data stops? Because you'll have a blank row or column. When you have a blank, and that's why we don't use blanks to separate data in a database. We use something else, a line or a uh, color, something else. You don't use blanks because in uh, Excel things you're done, that your data is, that, that your database is only where you've selected. That, that's called the current region. The next one allows you to move around the worksheet. Uh, control and will take you to the last cell where you have data. And or where you have formatting. So you may have a couple of cells that have the same formatting, but you might have deleted the data. It may take you there. Just keep that in mind. And then Control Home takes you to your first cell uh, that where you have data. 
which is generally A1. So those are really good ways to move around if, if your cursor happens to be somewhere out in the middle of, um, of the data somewhere. Now if you want to select everything a different way, remember Control A will select it all, but if you want to uh, select to the end, another option is Control Shift End. Now remember Control N takes you to the end, Control Shift makes it highlight or selected. So Control Shift End. Control F. Again, this works in all the programs, so I hope you have it memorized. Control F for find. And when you do that, you can find something. For example, I want to find anything that begins with the letter M. And why begins with? Because of that star. That star or asterisk means find any available character after the M. So that, that's our find. Well, H, Control H is actually replaced, but I say, how the heck am I going to remember that? It's hard to remember. So what I find uh, more useful than uh, Control H is remembering Alt the letter. Do you notice that the P is underlined in replace? Well, if I hold down Alt with P, so anything that's underlined while you have a dialog box open allows you to access that tool, whatever tool it is in this case, replace. So I simply remember Control F for find and then Alt P to get to replace. Because usually I want to find it before I want to replace it. Control 1, very important if you use format cells, and I know everybody uses format cells if you're in, in uh, Excel. So this opens it up. It's an easy way to open that dialog box. It's the same as either using, under alignment or number, the launch dialog box button. Now this one needs a little explanation because these are all very similar, but just a little bit different. Control plus the double quote the double quote and what that does is let's say that I put my cursor here and then hit control double quote it will take whatever's above that cell and replicate it it will create a replica copy of it in other words if you'll see here what was in there was the sum of H77 through H83 and this is also H77 through H83 so it's a replica of it however if I use control D then I put my cursor in the same second cell and it's as if I were holding down autofill and dragging it down without having to use the mouse. So what does that mean? That means that it will change ever so slightly. This is called a relative change based on where I am. And remember what was in that original cell was H77 but now it is H78. You see it's slightly changed based on the fact that I moved, I moved it. So control D is autofill copy. And control R is the same thing. It's, a, it's just that it will work when you're in the right cell. And it will copy whatever's on the left. So think of control D as co copy down and control R as copy to the right. And control double quote means make it an exact replica. Control tilde. Now I know other people pronounce it tilde, but I say tilde. And uh, uh, the tilde is uh, what allows you to see formulas. Now normally you only can see a formula in the formula bar and then you're going to see the values down below. Well I want to see the uh, the formulas everywhere. So I use control tilde and notice all the formulas show up. This is great if you want to print it out and see what the formulas look like. It is a toggle switch so you click it again control uh, tilde and it goes back to being just uh, values again. A lot of people don't know where the tilde is. It is up by the one on your keyboard. So it, there's a, a single quote there. It's a different than the double quote, single quote. It is, um, it's uh, the one up by the one. And so it's the tilde. F4. F4 has two very different uses. So if you are in a formula, it allows you to create an absolute reference. So in this case, my formula is H9 times I9. What but notice you see H9 here is a number I want to stay put. I want it to always be there even if I were to use Control D and autofill down. I don't want there to be a relative change. So instead I highlight H9 and then I hit F4 and then F4 is a function key. So F4 is down above the number keys on your keyboard and it automatically puts in these dollar signs, which makes this an absolute reference. So now if I use Control D or my autofill, uh, it will always be H9. All the others will change, but this will always stay the same.
Now, if I want to use F4 but I'm not in a formula, it will repeat whatever I just did. For example, let's say I just I deleted that line. Well, if I hit F4, it's going to now delete this line because that's what I happen to have done last. Uh, if I bold, italic, and underline something, it will do that. Whatever I just did, it will do it again. It will repeat your last action. This is a new one to me, but I think this is very convenient. If you use uh, uh, autofill, autofilter a lot, or just it's sometimes it's just called filter now, and that is Control-Shift-L. It's a toggle switch that turns on the filter, on and off, Control-Shift-Plus-L. And that's the same as using our sort filter, which is one click, and then clicking filter. So that's two clicks you can replace just by using uh, three keys together, Control, Shift, and L. F11 and Alt F1, they actually do the same thing, just a little bit different. Uh, let's say that I want to make a chart, and I have my data here. Now I've already selected what I want to chart. And then I hit F11, it instantly creates a new chart in a new sheet. So that could be very easy way to create exactly what I want. However, a lot of times I don't want a full sheet of just a chart. I want it next to the data. In that case, I would use Alt F1 because that will create an instant chart in the same sheet. Very convenient. I'll tell you, I've had people say that they would create charts if they thought they were easy. They are. <laughs> Simply highlight the data and hit Alt F1 or F11. Control S, we talked about that already, and that is save. However, F12 is save as, and that means that I get the chance to choose what I want to save it as. For example, if I want to save it as a PDF. Alt F4, this I needed just the other day because I couldn't get my mouse to work. And I was in the middle of teaching a class and I needed to be able to close a program and Alt F4 came to my rescue. So if you need to close any program while your cursor is in it, just hit Alt F4 and that's like hitting close. That's all this time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please click it. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.